Um, YouTube, I'm gonna record this just for a video, man. I'm recording this just for a video. All right, my boy JoJo. If you've seen this, this is this, this is hours before the Ryan Garcia and, and Javante Davis fight. I think that Tank is going to win. Okay, I think Tank is going to going to win. He's going to embarrass. He's going to embarrass Ryan. It's going to be a great fight, but it's going to come, it's going to come down to the wire. But but Javante will win because he will get he will get caught lacking. JoJo in chat. Look, John. JoJo think that he gonna win, and we'll make it a bet. Now, I think that Tank is gonna win. So, there was a video explaining somewhat, shape, or form on how Ryan could beat could beat Javante, and I'm gonna debunk this. All right? I think there's a way Ryan Garcia can beat Javante Davis. For my older fans, you're probably thinking. I'm a hypocrite. One of my earliest videos on yeah, this we, channel, we and this. quite possibly the video that made this channel, was me saying that Javante Davis was levels above Ryan Garcia. But I do think there is still a way Ryan Garcia I, I, I can win thinks. over Javante Davis. The idea intrigued me, and I got to thinking about this when a couple weeks ago, Ryan Garcia and Javante Davis revealed that they were going to fight in 2023. Despite me saying and still believing that Javante Davis will convincingly win over Ryan Garcia, I still do think there's a legitimate chance and a legitimate way for Ryan Garcia to possibly win. Now, yesterday at the time of this recording, I posted on my community poll asking you guys how Ryan oh, Garcia could a reach advantage has nothing to do with that, man. A reach advantage doesn't matter. Win against Javante Davis. Now, a couple of you bastards decided to answer this poll very smart but a couple of you guys actually had smart responses and a majority of those responses I'll read that. it's a mix of all that he got to use height speed and reach to start oh shit to start focusing on boxing davis is a lot smaller and if he rushes in then that opens him up a lot and we will be quick something quick but painful Work a lot of jazz and prayers, yeah. Highlighted the obvious reach and height advantage. Ryan Garcia is about five inches taller than Gervonta Davis, and he also yeah, has a two and a half inch reach, on, reach advantage over Gervonta as well. So it would be very beneficial for Ryan Garcia to stay behind his straight punches, especially his jab, and utilize his reach advantage. Mario Barrios, a fighter that has a very similar height and reach as Ryan Garcia, oh, had a lot of success in the early rounds when he fought Gervonta Davis by sticking his jab and his straight right hand and essentially utilizing his reach advantage to keep Gervonta Davis at bay. And joke on him all you oh. want, but Roly Romero actually had a lot of success in the early rounds when he fought Gervonta Davis and had a lot of success with that jab. So if Ryan Garcia can utilize his reach advantage, like a Mario Barrios yeah. or Rolly Romero, and couple that with his insane yeah, that's speed, that, I mean, that, he's going to give a lot that's of... That's something that Tank cannot allow. He cannot allow him to use his reach on him. He got to get up in there, man. Tank problems to Gervonta Davis, especially if he punches in bunches. And it should be noted that Mario Barrios and Rolly Romero were able to have this type of success because of Gervonta Davis's inactivity in early rounds. Tank is obviously known to be a power puncher, but he always tries to methodically find his openings, especially in the early rounds. This leads to him taking off some rounds, and in the second round, I believe, against that, that's Barrios, tactics, he only man. landed one punch. That's so tactics. again, in those early rounds when Gervonta Davis is kind of downloading that data and trying to find openings for his power punches, he's going to be taking off those rounds and landing very few shots. In those instances, Ryan Garcia should take advantage of this and land those straight punches and basically bank these early rounds. On top of this, Ryan Garcia should keep Gervonta Davis busy. Not only should he be banking these rounds by landing these straight punches, but he should land them in bunches and with volume because by doing so, you'll keep Gervonta Davis mentally busy as well, which is very important because during this time, he's again downloading this data. I think a lot of Gervonta Davis's past opponents' mistakes was that they were throwing these single punches during this time of inactivity, allowing Gervonta to find those openings and easily counter them down the line in the fight. Utilizing volume will keep Gervonta Davis preoccupied with defending these punches instead of trying to find openings to counter them. But Ryan should not be overconfident or overzealous because even if he does find success in backing up Gervonta Davis or landing a lot of punches, this is where Tank is probably at his most dangerous. I mean, a prime example of this See, is that's going to happen. That's going to fucking happen. Oh, he's going to be too overconfident, bro. He's going he gonna, he gonna to be thinking like he really doing something. Because, like, Ryan really that, really that type of nigga think he's doing something for real. As much shit as, he, as he's been talking. 
Mero we when see, bro. he we thought because he was see. landing so many punches, especially in the early rounds and backing up Javante Davis, he got a little overconfident and overaggressive, and Javante was easily able to counter him with a deadly left hook. The same thing kind of happened with Leo Santa Cruz when in an exchange against Javante Davis where he was landing and his confidence was growing, he was able to leave himself open for Javante Davis to land probably the deadliest yeah, uppercut oh I've ever gosh. seen. Now this is going to be very tough for Ryan, but he has to stay disciplined and he has has to stay behind his jab and the straight punches and not look for the finish or overextend. Because the moment you're a little too confident or a little too yeah, cocky against I'm your Javante Davis, dad, he'll find that little bit of daylight up. and put your lights out completely. Now, if Ryan is able to stick with the game plan thus far, which means utilizing his reach and utilizing jabs and straight punches and not getting overconfident and taking advantage of Javante Davis's inactivity, he also has to try to set up that left hook. The left hook for Ryan Garcia is by far his best weapon and definitely the equalizer in this fight. He landed a nasty left hook on the body of Luke Campbell in his biggest fight to date. He finished Francisco Fonseca with a nasty left hook to his chin. And for a majority of his opponents that he has knocked out, he's done it through the use of his left hook. So as he's landing these straight punches early in the round and staying disciplined, he also has to feint to the body in order to find that opening for that left hook. Obviously, he's done this before against multiple opponents where he feints to the body to land that left hook upstairs, but he especially has to do this against Javante Davis because he has to earn his respect. If he just continues with the game plan we have so far, Tank is eventually going to adapt and start ramping up his activity in the later rounds and might go over the top with those straight punches and might start to bully Ryan. So to keep an aggressive Javante Davis at bay, Ryan has to earn his respect and has to check him with a left hook when he's coming in. I can see this as a legitimate scenario where Javante Davis gets overly aggressive and tries to close the gap and tries to negate that reach advantage that Ryan has been using and Ryan could time him coming in with that super quick left hook. And with that, I think that concludes this very simple but very effective, I think, game plan for Ryan Garcia to defeat Javante Davis. Damn. I know there is probably a lot of... Okay. Nuances okay. that I missed, but I think generally this is how Ryan Garcia can defeat Javante Davis. Now, as far fetched as this game plan might be, I think this game plan is very similar to Dimitri Bivol's game plan against Canelo, where the yeah. longer fighter didn't allow the shorter, powerful fighter to find his opening and that took advantage really of that remember. shorter, powerful fighter's inactivity in the earlier rounds when he was trying to find those openings. Bivol was great at utilizing those straight punches, especially the jab, to keep the range and score points while Canelo was trying to find his opening. He stayed busy and he threw with a lot of volume and he also, most importantly, stayed disciplined and didn't allow Canelo to find that opening for a power punch. Yeah. If Ryan stays disciplined and stuck to this type of game that? plan, he's gonna find the same success Dimitri Bivol did against Canelo. Damn. But that's a big if. See, the big, big difference if. between a Dimitri Bivol and a Ryan Garcia is that Dimitri Bivol's skill set and his style is really great for this type of game plan. For Ryan, he has none of these skills to implement this game plan, nah. or at least hasn't showcased it enough. He hasn't really shown a good jab or has utilized the jab in volume. He also doesn't really set up his right hand all too much. He really relies on that big left hook. And in trying to land that left hook, he leaves himself wide open, wide open. if he misses. He kind of Look throws his left hook and hooks this. in general. Look at this! Jojo, this your boy? Jojo, this your boy? This your boy? Like maybe this dude not gonna use some opportunities, but you will. But we know Javante gonna use them. Rule with Come reckless on, abandonment, and he always tries to find that Why finish. So he may not be disciplined enough to keep don't, Javante don't, don't Davis at range, and he don't may overextend and leave himself you wide open in the for a Javante Davis counter. And I know this video is about how Ryan Garcia can win over Javante Davis, but realistically, this is how I see the fight going. Ryan's gonna get a little overconfident. He's gonna move forward. He's gonna throw his hook. Javante Davis is going to find that gonna opening. Place on his team. And Ryan's just simply not gonna have that discipline to keep his range, and Tank is going to find his shot. But if somehow Ryan gets a hold of this video and sees this game plan, I hope that he sticks to this game plan, stays disciplined, and maybe gets a shocker over Javante Davis. Who That'd be really fun to see. I have this one this chat, this one person I can call, bro. There's one person I can call that can that can debug this.